Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to simulate, render and composite a mist pass for your flip fluid simulations. Now simulated mist pass really helps tie everything together, adding that cinematic atmosphere that you often see in large scale water simulations. It's a crucial step in taking your shots to the next level and definitely a must if you want to add that extra dimension of detail. If you want to learn how to create large scale water simulations, I recommend checking out this video and the link is also in the description below. Now without further ado, let's jump into simulating our mist. Alright guys, so before we jump into Houdini, make sure to go down in the description and find the link to download the mist simulation and render templates. And as you can see in the folder that you download, I'm going to be providing a low res, a medium res and a high res simulation template and the render template. And you can just uh, pick whichever one of these uh, you want to use, but I definitely recommend using the high res uh, simulation template. We're simply just going to use the flip cache to simulate the mist here. So you can use this in pretty much any scenario where you have some uh, flip cache, some flip particles cached out. And in this case, we're going to continue on the shot we did here previously on the channel with the whale breaching out. So we're going to simulate a, a mist layer to add on top of that. And we're going to make it look really, really cool and compositing. And I'll show you all the steps here as well. So we're going to go into this geometry node. And it's already loading in my cache here, but I'm just going to show you where I load in the cache. Let me actually just hit escape on that. So, so we're going to go to the top here and we're going to, in our file cache here, as you can see, input flip particles, flip particle cache here. So we're going to load in our flip particle cache. And as you've seen from the course uh, where we cache out uh, the main flip particles, here they are. So we're just going to load them in. All right, guys. So now, as you can see, the flip particles have been loaded in and our file cache node here is set to load from disk. So it's loading the particles where it should. Perfect. Now let's go down here where we're going to be caching out our, our pyro source. And you can go ahead and tweak the particle separation here and the particle scale. But I find that these values work fine for, for this for this situation. So we're just going to leave it be and we're going to cache out the pyro source here as you can see this note is telling us to. So let's go ahead and cache out this pyro source. And I'm just going to take the name convention that I did already here, pyro source. And inside of our Houdini mist project here, I'm going to create a folder called simulation. going to create a folder called pyro source excuse me like so and we're going to use this naming convention so pyro source dollar f for all the frames dot bgeo dot se cuz that's the file format houdini uses and we're just going to click accept and we're pretty much just going to hit save to disk from here so i'm going to let that cache out and i'll be right back guys all right, guys, so we are back and the cache has finished and it took around four hours. So we are now ready to proceed. And as you can see, it's set to load from disk, which is perfect. So now it's using the cached files instead of having to cache it every time. So now that the source is complete, we are going to cache out our pyro smoke here. So our pyro smoke is our mist simulation. Yeah. And if you guys want to change some settings, you can go inside the pyro solver here and you can find the turbulence and disturbance and all kinds of cool uh, settings that you can tweak inside of here. And you can also go ahead and tweak the time scale and lots of different cool stuff. But I find that these settings work perfectly for uh, most of the scenarios that I do with flip simulation. So let's just go ahead and cache out our pyro smoke sim here. And I'm going to take the same naming convention once again, this one. And I'm just going to make sure that the path is correct here. So let me go ahead and go to our simulation folder and I'll create a pyro, uh, let's call it mist, pyro mist sim. So let's go inside our pyro mist sim folder here. I'm going to paste the naming convention and I'm just going to change smoke to mist so that it says pyro mist sim $f.bgo.sc. So we are pretty much good to go. 
And this is the last part before we go into rendering. So after this, we are ready to render our mist simulation. And from there on, we can just adjust the camera and do all kinds of cool camera angles with the same mist simulation. So we only have to do this once and then we have all we need. So let me just go ahead and click on save to disk and I'll be right back when this has finished guys. So I'll see you in a bit. All right guys, so the Pyromist sim is already done. It only took a couple minutes, which is kind of ironic that the source took much longer than the sim. But uh, I guess that makes sense because the source is, I think it was a 60 million particles flip simulation. So that's gonna take some time to run through. But this mist simulation only took a couple minutes, which is pretty awesome. So we are good to go, guys. I'm just gonna go ahead and save this project and we're gonna open up the render project. And we're gonna go ahead and open the uh, render template. And we already saved. All right, guys, so here we are. And as you can see, I have my main model loaded in here. And I'm using the, the 3D model here that comes with uh, the course on my channel. And you can see everything is already set up. It even has the, the pyro mist loaded in here. But I'm just gonna show you guys how to do that. So inside of our simulation folder, we created the pyro mist sim folder. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna open this. So now that we have the pyro mist uh, sim loaded in, we are pretty much ready to render because uh, I've already set everything up. So if we go into one of these nodes, you can see that I have under the, um, under the objects, I have set the main model and the ground to be a mat and it's only candi candidating the pyro smoke, which means that it's just gonna render the pyro smoke and everything is gonna be black or matted out so you can just simply apply this mist layer on top in in compositing which is perfect so um, before hitting the rendering button I'm just gonna show you guys that I created some different shaders here which are pretty much just the presets shaders that you have for smoke but you can play around with these I named some of them cool because I thought they were kind of cooler than the others so the billowy smoke here is pretty cool and the liquid smoke is also very cool, which is the one I'm using right now. So um, you can see here that it's using the liquid smoke, but you could always just apply one of the other shaders here if you wanted to play with that. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and see how it looks uh, when we render it out. All right guys, so everything is looking perfect. You can see as see the whale is being matted out here as we set up in the render settings so let's just go ahead and finish setting up the render and yeah let it cook so we can add it into our compositing so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the stop here we're gonna go into scene view I'm gonna go let me just check that the cameras here are set up correct because I do remember doing a larger resolution for the, the camera too and everything here is looking perfect so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the output path here is correct. And in this case, I'm just going to overwrite the test renders. And let me just check that the output is set up correct here. So missed camera one, camera one missed. Missed camera two, camera two missed. Yeah. So everything here is looking correct. And I'm just gonna link these two to our merge node. You can just render them separately if you wanted to do that. But uh, I'm just gonna batch render them. So I only have to press this button once and they're both gonna run through. So let's just hit the render button and I'll see you guys in a bit. All right guys, so here we are inside of After Effects. And you can simply use any sort of compositing software you'd like. You could even use an, an editing software to put this together because it's, it's a very simple uh, approach. So let's go ahead and import our mist renders. So firstly we have, so first up we have our camera one and then we have our camera two, our camera number two. And what we're then going to do is we're gonna interpret these as 24 frames since we're doing since we're working in 24 frames per second I'm just gonna make a folder here called mist and 
we're gonna put the two renders into that folder. All right, guys. So, so what we're going to do is we're gonna take the camera two mist layer and put it on top. So as you can already see, things are lining up perfectly. So if I solo the mist layer, you can see that the whale's um, shadow mat is working perfectly and it's aligning with uh, our with our render. So everything is looking good from here. And what I like to do is I like to add a CC toner or any kind of coloring um, effect so we can change the color here of the mist. So you could go for a greenish look if you're looking to make this whale looking very toxic or <laughs> like it's had a bad stomach or something. But in this case, we're just gonna, we're gonna use a bluish color. I'm actually gonna do it here in both of them. Maybe make this one a bit brighter. And we can set this to screen mode or normal. I prefer screen mode because it helps blend everything together and we can turn down the opacity and maybe just have this like as a very subtle effect just helping to just like glue everything together it does it does give like the shot a very cool atmosphere that it has all this mist so uh, I kind of I kind of I really like it it's, it's definitely a very cool addition to to the scene and also often when you do these large-scale ocean simulations, there, there's going to be a mist in there for sure, because that's going to help blend everything together and it just looks natural. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. You could, yeah, what you could also do is you could maybe use the levels to tone down some of the spots. So we could use these levels to just kind of like contrast it a bit, so we're only having Just making it a bit more subtle here with the levels, controlling it a bit. So something like that could work. You know, start, let's not darken it too much. Also, that also helps give it a little, bit more, a little bit more color, but I do like that it has that whitish color. That seems kind of natural. Um, but yeah, guys, you could you could tweak this forever. Something I, I would also maybe do is maybe I would actually mask off some of the areas. So like, what happens if I if I only have this area have the mist? Excuse me, something like that. Yeah, so maybe something like that. And you could also duplicate it if you want to have like okay a lot of mist. And honestly guys, I think that looks awesome. I would prefer that there would be a, a lot of mist. So that's a very, very cool look. And this shot is from uh, the course that I have available, which you can find in the description. So if you want to create something like this, you, this is not a render that's made after the course or before the course. This is the exact render we are creating. And I'll guide you from the very first steps to the end to create these renders. So, um, so yeah, that's how you add um, that's how you add mist to your flip simulations. I hope you guys liked the video. Please leave a comment down below what you want to see next, what kind of courses and tutorials you want to see, and uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe. I really do uh, appreciate the support. All right, guys, I'll see you.